In MathCAD, you can create polar plots. In this video, we will continue our journey with three different kinds of curves. Fermat's spiral, the limousin, and something really interesting, the devil's curve. All right, so let's start off by going to the plots tab. And I'm gonna start out by making a range variable for my angle. Let's use, actually let's go back to the math tab to show you where you can get to symbols. I will use this symbol, theta, which is also the keyboard shortcut of the letter Q, followed by control G. Control G will change a letter from its regular form that we're used to into its Greek equivalent. So let's choose theta, and we're gonna have this go from zero, and then I'll use the comma, and that will give us the step range variable. And I'll use a small step of 0 0.01, and for the spiral, I'm gonna go to eight pi, eight times P control G. And now I will click where I want my polar plot to go. Let's go to the plots tab, insert plot, and here we have polar plot. And then on the radial axis, we are going to plot the square root of x. And if you use the backslash, that's the keyboard shortcut for the square root. And then I'll put in theta, Q, control G. And then down here for the angular axis, I'll put in theta once more, Q, control G. And then let's click on the outside so you can see the spiral. Let me grab and make this a lot bigger so that you can see it. And the Fermat spiral is a special kind of parabolic spiral. And one thing about this is that the distance, or excuse me, the area between any two consecutive turns is the same, which means that as it goes outward, it actually going to move a little bit inward. Uh, the spiral in order to keep that area the same. And if we want to explore it even more, hey, let's go out to 16 pi, which is eight full turns. And you can see how it is getting closer as each loop goes out. Let me click over here. Let's go to our trace color. I want it to be a little brighter. Let's go to more colors. And I'm just going to crank the blue all the way up and click the OK button. And let's also make the trace thickness a little bit bigger. So that is good for the positive value. Let's add another trace and let's just do the negative. Let's do negative and then I'll use the backslash to get square root and then Q, control G. Click on the outside and we have our second one. Let me select the second one and go to the trace color and I'll use the bright red color and let's change the thickness as well. And so there you can see both sides of the Fermat spiral. So again, something that you can play around with yourself. You can also multiply this by a coefficient for other different variations. So that's good for the first one. Let me scroll down and I'm gonna need some space for my limousin. So let me start over here and I'm gonna Reset my theta variable. Let's use Q control G. And this is going to be equal to 0, comma, 0 0.01. And then I'll use my arrow to move out to the other placeholder. And let's just go out to 2 pi. 2 times pi, which is P control G. And for the lima zone, I'm going to set up some coefficients to use. And so I can play around with them later on. Let's set up a coefficient a, a variable a. This will be equal to four. And then let's do a second one, b. And b I will make equal to five. And so I'm gonna make four different functions for the limosomes. So let's type in limosome one. And I'll do this as a function of an angle alpha, a control g. This is going to be equal to a plus B times cosine of our angle alpha, A control G. Let's do a second one. Let's do limousin two as a function of alpha, A control G. And this is going to be equal to, by the way, I'm using the definition operator. That is the keyboard shortcut of the colon key. This will be equal to A minus 
B times cosine of alpha, A control G. And then we'll make two other variations, lemma sum 3 as a function of alpha, A control G. This will be equal to A plus B times sine of alpha, A control G. And the last one, you can probably guess where I'm going with this one. Oops, let me go lemma sum 4 as a function of alpha, A control G. Then the colon key for the definition operator, A minus B times sine of alpha. Okay, so those are my four different functions. Let's scroll down so that we can put in our polar plot. Insert plot, polar plot, and scroll down, and let's grab this. Let's make it a little bit bigger to start out with. Okay, so on the radial axis, let's put lima sum 1 as a function of, and this time I'm going to use my range variable theta, Q, control, G. And then on the angular axis, I'll put in theta, Q, control, G, and then click on the outside. So there you see what our lima sum looks like. And then let's click over here and let's add in a, another trace. Let me scroll down a little bit. I don't need to see my formulas anymore and I can make this whole thing a little bit bigger and wider. For our second one, it'll be lima sum two as a function of theta, Q, control, G, and then click on the outside. Let's change the color just so that we have more contrast trace color, and I'll go with my nice bright red. Let's change the thickness while we are at it. Let's go back to the first one and change its thickness as well. And so you can see that when we have it, when we go from plus to minus the cosine component, it ends up going to the other side. Let's see what happens when we add in the ones that involve sine instead of cosine. Let's click over here and then add a trace and lima sum three as a function of theta, Q, control, G, and click on the outside. And let's select this third trace and change its color. And let's go to more colors. I'm just gonna grab a greenish color and click okay. And let's change the thickness of this one as well. And let's add in our fourth trace, add trace, Lima sum four as a function of theta, Q, control, G, and click on the outside. This one is yellow. It's pretty hard to see on the background. So let's go to our trace color. Let me go to more colors. Let me see what would stand out in here. Let's grab a purplish color and click the OK button and increase the thickness. And so there is a special case of the limosone called a cardioid, and that's when these two different coefficients are the same value. So let me scroll up where I have my different variables. Let's change, say, the A variable. Let's change this from a 4 to a 5, and then click on the outside, and you can see how it ends up changing. And it looks like a heart, hence the name cardioid. But... Again, you can play around with these different values in here. So for example, if I change this to a two and then click on the outside, you can see that the inner loop ends up getting a little bit bigger. But again, these are nice, easy equations that you can play around with and have fun with uh, changing the different variables that you have set up. All right, now for the devil's curve. Now, I'll be honest, I don't understand this one at all. It is weird. It is fun to play around with. And so let me start off with a couple of variables. Let's use C this time. C, I will set to an initial value of 1. And let's use another one, D. And this is going to be equal to, let's also start out with a value of 1. Again, I'm going to play around with it. And let's see, with our theta value, I think I'd reset it so it's only going to 2 pi. Let me scroll up to confirm. Yep, that should work for this one. Uh, actually, I do want to play around with it. I'm going to show you something else that is going to be weird with it. So let's set up Q, Control, G. 
I'm going to use the same initial value as before, and then we'll see what happens when I start playing around with the interval. And this is going to go to 2 pi, 2 times P, control G. And now let's set up our function for the devil's curve. And devil as a function of, I'll use phi to be different, F control G. This is going to be equal to, I will use the colon key on the keyboard. And this is the square root. And by the way, let me show you the square root operator. If I go to the math tab operators, and here we can get to our square root and nth root. Again, the backslash is the keyboard shortcut for this. But this is going to be equal to d squared, d, shift 6 for the exponent, d squared. Let me move my arrow to the right. And it's going to be d squared plus, and then our c squared, c, shift 6 for squared. Then I'll use the space bar to highlight all of this. C squared is going to be divided by the cosine, and then I'll do parentheses, of 2 times our function variable phi, which is F control G. And so this is the devil's curve. Let me select, let me just move it a little bit down just to get a bit of spacing. Now let's click where we want our polar plot to be. I'll go to the plots tab, insert plot, polar plot, and let's make this bigger. And down on the bottom, we will plot theta. So let me put theta, which is Q control G. And then here we're going to put our function, which is devil. By the way, they call it devil's curve because of, I don't know, Diablo, some uh, foreign word. And uh, again, you'll see how it is. It's just a really fun function to play around with. Let's do open parentheses and then theta, which is Q control G. And then I will click on the outside. And so right now you're like, okay, yeah, not that interesting. Let me turn off our different axis expressions, tick marks. I just want to get you to be able to see the curve and really nothing else. But anyhow, so right now it looks like an X and it goes out onto infinity. What gets really interesting though is when our value for this D increases. So once I change it to something above uh, where it's equal to the C value, let me click on the outside, you end up getting this figure eight symbol in the middle. You can keep on playing around with changing this, like let's try a value of five. You can see how that little figure eight in the middle gets bigger. Let's change this a couple more times. Let me try to change this really big. Let's make it say 15. Wow, and then you see it really, really ends up changing the shape over here. Let's go back down a little bit more. So this one you can just play around with and see how the numbers end up changing the curve over here. And then what's also interesting is if you start playing around with the spacing here, you actually end up changing the value. So let me change so that we have a smaller increment, 0.01 and click on the outside, you can see that it ends up extending some of these different branches. Once again, I'll punch in another zero in there. Oops, too many points in there. Let me try changing this to a five. Yes, there's a limit to the number of points that you can have in there. So I like this one over here because it looks like a cool little sort of like X-Men symbol uh, that they might wear on one of their jackets or something. But anyhow, that is the devil's curve. Who knew that something that looks so relatively simple can end up with such complex geometry? So there you have it, three different curves that you can play around with in polar plots in MathCAD Prime.